Welcome to Luxon Photography. Today I have a lens review for you. A lens that is not reviewed that often, um, especially not with portrait photography, although it's a lens that's really beautifully suited for exactly that. Here is the Canon EF 200mm f2.8 L2 lens. So it's the second version of this lens. It's a prime lens with 200mm, it's a fixed focal length, so you can only see or photograph with a 200 millimeter focal length and no other so there is no zoom and this is a lens that's kind of outside of the usual portrait area now the lens that you probably have seen or heard of is the 70 to 200 there is a variety of those zoom lenses out there like the 70 to 200 f4 f4 is the 70 to 200 f2.81 f2.8 version 2 and now the f2.8 version 3 there is an older version without image stabilization so there are many many zoom lenses that cover the 200 millimeter lens even with the f2.8 aperture uh, so why would i go with this lens that doesn't give me zoom that only puts me in the 200 millimeter area so let me explain um, i'm really really excited uh, to play with this lens i have this now for around a week i picked it up Actually, there is a list with camera gear that I have in my mind and on a piece of paper with stuff that I like to experience. Often it's not something essential, it's not what I really need. Uh, the stuff that I need, I have that already, but there is stuff that I want. And so when I, every once in a while, I go grab one of those things. And the 200mm f2.8, I actually found a year ago on eBay. I sent the money and then I never heard again of the person. So the money's gone and there is no lens. So that was my first time buying this lens around one and a half years ago. So uh, that's a nice story for me to tell. Uh, I like the positive stuff, but the, to get a lot of positive, you have to also get some of the negative. So that's no problem for me. Uh, it was totally fine. It's the kind of the cheapest L prime lens in the Canon lineup of the professional lenses. So I was lucky to only have a couple of hundred euros lost and not thousands. Um, so anyways, just a couple of days ago, I picked it up in Hamburg. This time I thought, don't send the money and wait for the lens to arrive. Let's go there and meet the person. And we also checked the exhibition of Peter Lindbergh, the, oh, most famous photographer and portrait photography over the last 30 years who just died recently a year ago three days after he had finished this exact exhibition uh, so we picked it up and there were some ideas i had about this lens now this is not an essential lens for me but it's something that i was looking to play with i was curious because first there are not many people who talk about this lens i don't know how many have it but there are not many reviews about it online. The most reviews in the area of portrait photography goes like the 35mm, 50mm, 85mm and I have the 85mm 1.2 here just as a comparison so you see the size. Now thinking or talking about weight the 85 is much heavier than this one. The 85 1.2 is much heavier than the 200mm just from holding it I can feel it uh, immediately. I have another lens here, the, two, uh, the 135 2.0, a beautiful phenomenal lens, f2.0, 135, I love this, this is the most beautiful uh, image producer uh, I've ever met, so anything looks great with this lens. Now looking at these two, the 200 is a little bit longer, weight wise they are kind of the same, I don't actually know the numbers uh, from from thought but they feel relatively light for what they are telephoto lenses with open aperture in 2 and 2.8 area so it's really light it's not that big is this one is a little bit longer but it's still not really big uh, I had a 70 to 200 many years ago and it was always too big for me it's always too too big to present because it's white. Now these white lenses, you know, from football matches, soccer games, Formula One races, this, these are expensive lenses. And when you go out with the 70 to 200, everybody knows that this is an expensive lens. 
And I also like the minimalistic approach, so I like to use zoom uh, prime lenses and not zoom lenses because I don't want the choice, I don't want the option to be able to zoom to another focal length. I don't want to have the option to go to 70 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 135 millimeters, 150 millimeters, 200 millimeters all the time with one lens. I don't want that. I want the simplicity of just one lens, one focal length, and there is beauty and simplicity in photography. The more choices I have, the more lenses I bring with me, the more cameras I have, the more zoom stuff I have, the less I'm in the moment and the more I'm thinking in my head about the gear. Or should I go with the wide angle or with the telephoto? Or should I zoom here or there? So I really enjoy photography the most when I only have one camera, one lens. So I took this lens out just after I got it. It's Corona time, so I didn't meet with many people now to test this lens. I thought the most honest way for me to test this lens is to photograph myself. So I put this lens on the Canon 6D Mark II that's filming now, put a remote control on the camera, another in my hand, and then I tested everything. I wanted to see how do the images look like when I get really close to the camera, like a portrait like this. How do the images look like if I want a vertical image, so the camera a little bit to the side, but from top to the bottom, so from here to, so you can see my feet. How do these images look like? How far do I have to go away from the camera? The camera has a flip out screen, so I can see myself filming now, but I also see when I use this lens, I can go further away, really far away and still see, am I in the frame? Is my head in it or not? Is my shoulder in it? Are my feet in it? I can see that even from the distance. Uh, and I didn't know if that was possible to get so far away and still see am I in the frame with the flip out screen here. Remote control works easily, no matter the distance, up until 100 meters. And uh, whenever I go into a lens that I thought about for a longer time, like this lens, I have an idea about it, hopes about it. and. I can tell you all the hopes I had with this lens are actually have come true. So I hope that it would be light and it is light. I hope that the focus is fast and quick and that it is. I hope that even at open aperture I get great sharpness and focusing on point and that actually delivers. I hope to get the beautiful blurry background that looks like a painting. When I look at these images that I took just two days ago here of myself, I had the same stuff on, same shirt as now, same pants, same shoes, just with different jackets. I only changed the jackets and I really love how the background compresses. So when you use a wide angle lens, a wide angle lens goes like this. You will see everything. You will see the sky and what's there and what's there. And the subject you photograph has to share the attention with all the things around. So the person is just another part of the image. With the more telephoto you go, the more important becomes the person because everything else will get blurred out. Blurred out. You will not see anything of the background. If there is a dog walking, if there is birds flying, the trees you will not see. You will only see color in the background and some kind of texture or structure. And this is exactly what I wanted. This is a beautiful lens for shooting outdoors when you're outside, whether it's photographing people or also photographing dogs. Imagine you throw a ball really far and then the dog runs. And when the dog comes back with the ball, you can just click, 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 click. I use the face detection on the 6D Mark II to photograph myself and it works really, really well, even with the distance. I show you I just hold up here the other lenses again. So the 135, which kind of has the same weight, and the 85 1.2, which is much heavier. You feel it immediately, it's much heavier. And uh, these are all great lenses. All of these are great uh, lenses for everything. I you can photograph everything with it beautifully. And the 200 millimeter is a lens that's not covered so often, so I wanted to make a video about it. So it's one of the cheapest L lenses out there. Uh, in terms of prime lenses. I think there is the 17 to 40 millimeter zoom lens that's I think that's cheaper uh, and the 70 to 200 f4 without the IS I think is also cheaper but prime lenses I think it's one of the cheapest lenses 
think after that is the 100 millimeter macro lens probably. It costs around 740 euros new. I bought it for 475 and I can sell it for the same price anytime. That is the beauty of buying lenses used. You don't pay anything for it if you actually sell it uh, in a year or so, which I may not, but it's easy to buy a lens like this because you know it doesn't depreciate like a camera. Cameras go down in value every year um, unless you use Leica, but lenses always stay very, very high over decades often. Many lenses actually rise in price. Uh, Okay, so this video is separated into three areas. This is the area where I talk about it and I actually show you the lens. The next area is we go into photo mechanic and I show you the unedited JPEG straight from the camera for those people who don't like my editing style or want to see how do the images look like without any touch to them. And then in the third area we go into Lightroom and go from the unedited images to the editing and you also see all the settings. I shot every image you see here wide open, f2.8 and the other settings you will see in the, in the editing process. Now this lens does not have image stabilization so for video it's not, a, it's not the best option, it's not the easiest option let's say. Now the most modern cameras have some kind of stabilization and even the 6D Mark II I could get a very stable image when I used the digital image stabilization to the fullest and I, I could handhold film the 200mm lens uh, e quite easily uh, but if you have older cameras that's, you have to use a tripod. Uh, so no image stabilization which I think is fine. The 2.8 aperture really works great when photographing outdoors. Um, when indoors this only makes sense in big places like in a church when the bride's coming in with her father and you want to capture very close their faces and, and the emotion. You can capture it with a wide angle lens or 50 millimeter but you will not get actually that close. With this lens you can get really close. So it's, this is beautiful for weddings um, where you need that reach where you, where you want to photograph from a point and want to photograph maybe in a church and you, you are somewhere near the couple but all the people who sit behind the couple, the parents, the sister, the brother, the grandma, which the couple never sees. The couple looks to the priest, uh, or the, yeah, to the, perp, to the person talking, but they never see what's going on in the background. They don't see the mother crying. The 200 millimeter lens lets me capture that, all the people sitting there in the background, and capture it very very closely so that's a beautiful lens. Photographing dogs and, and on, on the, on the in, in nature it's really beautiful. Photographing any sports event outside I think is really nice but anything inside where like a room like this this is not the way to go you need some space for it. Now there are two buttons here there's the AF and MF so autofocus manual focus like any Canon EF lens <clears throat> and here you have another button. It's one and a half meter to infinity, three and a half meter to infinity. This means when I want to photograph myself and I get really close to the camera and I only want to photograph the face, I go to one and a half meter to infinity. Uh, so the minimal distance is one and a half meters. Now if I want to photograph birds flying around, cars driving and the Formula One race, football players play their ball to the, in the soccer, soccer game and I know I'm not going to photograph something close I can go to three and a half meters to infinity and get faster focus because the focusing doesn't need to go up until one and a half meters away. It only needs to go three and a half to infinity. So it's focusing even faster. But I can tell you no matter which setting you use, the focusing is really, really fast. Uh, it's way faster than I may need. And on many images you see, I walk towards the camera while taking pictures and the camera caught up really, really well shooting at single shot. Uh, focusing mode. Okay, I think I gave you now a lot of words for it. Images blended in. And now we let's go into photo mechanic, take a look at the images straight from the camera and then take a look at the editing part. So you really see uh, the settings to these images but also how I created them. I can really recommend this lens if you want to photograph people outside. Um, it really gives a really beautiful look. It renders lovely. It's sharp, wide open, autofocus works great. Um, you got that compression that you can also get with the 135. 
but there are moments you know getting a person from top to bottom and still get blurry background you cannot get that with the 35 or 50 millimeter that much you will see a lot of the background uh, you don't have that blurry background anymore even at f1.4 or so and the 200 millimeter is a beautiful choice for that Photo for photographing something in the background that's from from the distance and still get the blurry background and that isolation so i really can recommend this lens especially for the price light small cheap great quality it's a hidden gem in the photography world and i'm looking forward to the time uh, i'm going to use this lens i'm going to use it often um, and I, there, I will bring it out sometimes as my only lens just to enjoy it and focus and go all in on it. Thank you very much. So now we're here in Photo Mechanic where we can take a look at the JPEG files straight from the camera. These images are taken with the Canon 6D Mark II with the EF 200mm f2.8 prime lens and I took these images at f2.8 all of them all images we are going to see are all taken at open aperture f2.8 i want to see how blurry is the background i want to see how good is the sharpness i also want to see does the focus hit uh, i took kind of all these images with the dual pixel af on the 6d mark ii so i don't have any focus points i just click on the touch screen or i select the face detection when i photograph people which we will uh, <clears throat> take a look at in a moment now it's autumn now it's at the end of October and this is just a park in front of the house I just went out and took some images to capture this beautiful moment the colors uh, these images I think are really well and there is not much I need to edit we will go into editing in a moment where we um, I'm really curious to take a look at the portraits I took and how we can edit them but before we go into editing because I know not everybody will like edited images or my style of editing maybe so I thought let's take a look at the unedited JPEG straight from the camera <clears throat> which we do right now so these are all the unedited files from the 60 mark 2 you see it up here Canon 60 mark 2 200 millimeter aperture 2.8 shutter speed one thousandth of a second and I'm really happy with these images. Now I had an idea about the 200 millimeter lens and what I wanted from it. And I wanted from it nice blurry background. I wanted compression. I wanted intimacy. Um, I wanted to get an image where you, where you kind of not see so much. You just see just a little bit of the real world, but that which you see, you see in a really beautiful aesthetics and in a really intimate way. Uh, and we will take a look at the portraits in a moment to, to see how that works in portrait photography. Now, when we look at lenses and we look at the Canon lineup, there are some phenomenal lenses like the 50mm 1.2, 85mm 1.2, 135mm 2.0. I have all these lenses and they are all phenomenal. Why go with the 200 2.8? Well, I always have a list of lenses or gear that I like to test just for me as somebody who loves photography it's not necessarily because i need it but it's because i want it and i have these things in my head and i know once i make them once i make them real it's out of my head there is space for new stuff and so it was just time for me to get this one lens and i'm really really happy with how the images look like now these images is corona time now and i didn't want to meet up with people uh until now just for the photography side so i thought let me go out it's just after the day i got the lens let me go out with myself i just have the same outfit and just change jackets and the way i took these images is right here so i have the canon 60 mark ii here on a tripod it's a very small tripod that fits into my camera bag here i have a remote control and another one in my hand here I have the flip out screen so I can see from the distance am I in the frame or is my head cut off like here in the beginning. I can see even from the distance <clears throat> if I am in the frame or not. 
Now, the, because of the flip out screen and the face detection, I can photograph myself very easily. I still see myself here on the screen. And these are the images straight from the camera. And this is how it looks like. And I think the images turn out really, really nice. Uh, I just wanted to test out the lens just for myself. I wanted to see everything shot at f2.8 wide open. I wanted to see how far do I have to get away to get a full body portrait uh, in vertical mode and in horizontal mode. I wanted to see how close can I get to the lens. I wanted to see how blurry will the background be. I wanted to see uh, how good is the sharpness, how good does the autofocus work with face detection even when I'm further away. And kind of all these images turn out really, really well. This is my selection of files and we will go into Lightroom in a moment to take a look at how we can edit them. But I know some people don't like edited images or they don't necessarily like my style maybe. And so I thought to give everyone a certain look on the images. Let's let's first take a look at the unedited ones, which I think turn out already pretty nice. Now here, for example, you have an idea. We have a person photographed whole body um, with the horizontal uh, with the vertical camera, so the camera is upside, and we still get blurry background. We still have a beauty bouquet and intimacy. Now, when I use other lenses, 50 millimeter, 35 millimeter lenses more on the wide angle side. When I try to get a picture of somebody with the whole body in it, um, there is no longer that blurry background. There's no longer that intimacy. You pretty much can see everything that happen that's happening in the background. Where here, uh, you still have that really dreamy background that looks kind of artificial. It doesn't look like real. It looks like an, an, a painting in the background. And this is what I what I hoped I would get. And it is exactly that which I got. Uh, beautiful sharpness, excellent autofocus, phenomenal face detection. I mean, on some of these images, I'm pretty far away. And the camera had no problem uh, capture, capturing me, even shooting wide open at f1.8. And we will go into Lightroom in a moment, but before that I thought, let me just go through some of these images, the JPEG files. Here you have the settings. The settings the settings are kind of all the same for every photo shoot because I just set the settings in the beginning and then I shoot and the setting is always the same. There's no auto white balance. There's no auto anything. Everything is manually. So 2.8, ISO 400, 200 millimeters, 60 Mark II, face detection on, 1 640 of a second. And now all images will be with these settings. And here you actually see the, the exact same moment like here. Uh, let's just take a look. So I'm here. This is kind of... Sorry, here I have the glasses on. But you, you get... Uh, you can see the distance here. I can still see myself here on the screen and it, it's a really nice workflow. Uh, it's super easy to take self-portraits. If you're interested in it, I've created a whole workflow with editing and which cameras to use and which accessories and where the light is and where to look and a lot of details about getting great images if you're interested in taking images for you for yourself, for Instagram, something like this. Uh, this is an easy way to do. You don't need to pay somebody. You just need a camera and the lens and a remote control. And this is what can come out of it. Now, I think the 200 millimeter lens, the f2.8 is, is not that common. You, you will find many reviews about the 50 millimeter lenses and 35, 85, but even the 135 is a beautiful lens, legendary lens, but it's not that common um, not as common as 35, 15, 85. And the 200 millimeter prime lens is even less common. So what other lenses are there compared to this? There's the 135 2.0, which is a phenomenal lens, which gives a very lit, similar impression like this, also on the telephoto side. But this has still more compression and, and still a very different look as well. Um, 
there are two other options that we may take a look at, which is the Canon EF 200 millimeter F 2.0, which is a four, five, six thousand euro lens. So it's very expensive, it's very heavy. It's not something that I can put on this tripod here and uh, let it let it there because it might fall down or it will just uh, it will be too heavy on the front that it that it falls to the front. Uh, so it's not that practical. It's super expensive. There's a 200 millimeter f1.8 version. There's a 200 millimeter f2.0, and I think there are even a variety of lenses with IS without IS. Um, I don't think these are lenses that you can compare because of the price and and weight uh, difference. So I think the lens that much more uh, is in comparison to this is the 70 to 202.8. Now this is a 202.8 and there is a 70 to 202.8 or actually three if you just look at the EF lineup with uh, image stabilization which this lens doesn't have. So why if I why do I buy a 135 2.0, 85 1.2 and 200 2.8 if I can get all of these focal length not with these apertures but I can get all of these focal length with the 70 to 200 why don't I go with the 70 to 200 now I don't like the weight I don't like the size it's a little bit more expensive uh, or more on the expensive side and it's not my type of style of photography to use zoom lenses this, which is which is something very subjective. It doesn't speak of the quality of the lens, but I don't like using zoom lenses. So I like to use prime lenses. It makes everything more easy for me. And here you see now the images with the 200 millimeter all at f2.8 unedited. We will go into Lightroom in a moment, but I thought I give you my ideas about the lens and <clears throat> share some images here. These are all taken uh, by myself with the tripod and a remote control. I hold the remote control somewhere in my hands. Uh, it's very small, you don't actually see it, but just so you understand that it's only me there taking pictures, there's no one else. And because of coronavirus, I didn't want to meet with people or not with many people. So I thought the easiest way to test this lens is just to photograph myself. Get very close to it, get further away. There are two buttons on the lens. The one is the autofocus button. So you can put the autofocus on or turn the autofocus off. And the other button is uh, for the focus distance. So you can choose uh, either focus from one and a half meters to infinity or focus on three and a half meters to infinity. Now, when you want to focus on something that's very far away, like you want to photograph cars in the distance or planes flying by or birds, you know you will not focus anything that's within one and a half meters. So you can go with the three and a half meters to infinity. Then the focus will be even faster. If you are like me right here and I go and I'm walking towards the camera and I come closer and closer and closer, and I will somewhere be very, very close to the camera. I can set the camera to one and a half meters to infinity, which takes a little bit longer to focus, but still is super fast. But it can be even super faster if you go to the three and a half to infinity distance. So you have this button there. There is no other button, so it's very easy. And I love the look of the lens. I mean, the autofocus, I don't have to look into the camera. I look to the side. The background looks beautiful. You don't see anything. Uh, it's just a cre creamy, it looks like a, a painting in the background. Uh, it doesn't really look real here. That's that's what I was looking for. That's what I was hoping to get. And the lens actually delivered in a beautiful way. So here you now got, got the images unedited, unedited straight from the camera. I wanted to give you an insight into how the images look like, especially photographing people. I think many people are interested in this lens photographing people and how the background will look like. And I'm not so much a big fan of photographing flowers or trees because you cannot necessarily see how that then will look in photographing people. And so I wanted to give you many images with this lens where I photograph a person. In this case, it's myself. And we will now go into Lightroom and edit those images and see how well we can edit them and how the final image will look like. So see you in a moment. So now we're here in Lightroom. 
I picked up the lens in Hamburg. I bought it for 475 euros. It costs 200 euros more new. And uh, I thought I'd just get that used and take a look at the Peter Lindberg exhibition, which just went until the 1st of November. So I just got to see that exhibition. And we're now going to edit the images uh, that we took with the 200 millimeter f2.8 lens. I already edited some here, so let me just go into some of these images. This is unedited. Let me copy this to all the other images, just like this, synchronize. What I do now is I just edited a couple of those to make the video in German, but I want to give you also the how I edit. So let's undo everything. Now all the images you see are now unedited. This is now the raw these are now the raw files. All the highlighted photos are just unedited raw files, which already look nice. It's warm, nice colors, autumn. So the look is already nice. I don't need to edit. I like to edit. I want to edit and I'm used to edit my photos. So we are going to edit them. On my left side here, I have presets here. And when I now have my image here, you see nothing here has changed. If I now go on my presets, you see immediately what happened if I click on one of those. So for example, let's choose one specific look, maybe the sepia vibe. I click on it. Now the image is sepia. I can make adjustments or I leave it as that. I now copy this look to the next, let's say 10, 12 images. Synchronize. You see it's working here and down here, you see everything now is sepia. And I can now go through these images and make small adjustments. Maybe I make it a little bit darker. And this is how I edit uh, any session. Now this is a session, a wedding is a session, a pottery shooting is a session. So all images have the same look. Now let's go to the next or next images. Um, I can choose another look. So let's go with maybe this one. Violetta. Copy this to the next 10, 12, 15 images, synchronize. I just want to give you uh, a variety of looks to the images taken with a 200 millimeter lens. So you get an idea. These are all shot at f2.8 on the 60 Mark II. So I want to give you an idea of how the images look like. Now, when I took out the lens in the park, this is the park in front of the house, uh, I thought 200 millimeters is a little bit a little bit too much telephoto to photograph a park or trees. That is what I thought. Well, actually, I really like the images. Uh, you don't really see much of the whole thing, but you see a lot of the uh, detail. And that is what I, what I was going for with this lens. I wanted to get compression in the image. I wanted to focus on one single thing. I don't want to see everything. I want to see some detail that I would not see with, for example, a wide angle lens. And I also want a certain perspective with the compression that I get uh, so that the background actually gets closer together and gives more atmosphere. This is exactly what I wanted. And looking at these images now, this is exactly what the lens delivers. Uh, I, I had some hopes for this lens, some hopes in terms of how the look would be. and the lens actually really well delivered. Uh, let me choose another preset here. Maybe, maybe, maybe go with black and white. Copy it to the next, copy it to the next images. Uh, so the first idea walking into the park with the 200 millimeter lens and no other lens, I thought, well, that might be, uh, I don't know, new territory, but I'm really happy with the, with the result. Let me, let's, let's go with the color. I'm really happy with the result that I got. Um, and I try to give you a variety of looks here so you get a feeling of uh, how the images turn out, especially with the 200 millimeter f2.8 lens at f2.8. If it's blurry, this is, I've, I've, photo I've, I've uh, photographed the water. So here you see the water line and this is on the water. And I think you can ma maybe make it a, a desktop background or print it very large and just turn it into art, kind of. So I just was out here maybe 10 minutes or so just to test out the lens and it really, really delivered in a very unique way. That is really a great uh, addition to, let's say, a 35 millimeter lens or 50 millimeter lens. 
So sometimes I like to shoot, if I go on a professional shoot, I always have two cameras with me with two focal length, two different lenses. But also going through the park, I can totally see that uh, I, I may take one telephoto lens with me, 135 millimeter or 200 millimeter lens, and then one wide angle lens. So I can capture the detail with the telephoto lens and the overall impression with the wide angle. Okay, so these are the images that we got from the landscape, from the park, and I think the images turn out really nice. I just added pretty quickly here, I don't go much into detail because I want to give you an overview look of how the images turn out with the 200 millimeter lens. Um, and this is now the landscape side of things. So now let's go into the portrait side. So let me jump here. Uh, Let's just go somewhere here. Ba -ba -ba -bom. I already edited those, so let me go to an unedited. Now these are unedited. Now I, I uh, showed you already how the images were taken, so I'm standing any, anywhere. I wanted to see how do the images look like very far away, so I was standing here and then getting closer to the camera. I have a remote control in my hand. I see myself on the flip out screen. Here's the remote control, so they have uh, they connect to each other. And here's actually, uh, you can see how I how quickly I take the pictures. Um, so up here, you see a number, 2,292. This is how many shots are still available on the card. And whenever I take a picture, the number goes down. So you see here it goes down, zack, 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 87, 85, 84, 83, 82, 81, 80. I'm walking. I capture these images while I'm walking. I'm not standing still. This is the speed of how I took these images. I walk towards the camera. This is all shot with a single focus point. There is no continuous autofocusing. Everything is set in manual, so the shutter speed, aperture, ISO is all the same all the time. And so you see how quickly you can take th these images. Here you see the, the numbers go down tuck, 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 because I'm taking pictures all the time with the remote control in my hand. And this is how the images here were created. And this is how it looks like then. So this is all the unedited RAW file now. These are the un unedited RAW files. And the lens really delivers on what I hoped it would give me. I wanted that blurry background. I wanted that dreamy look, even if I were further away. Now with many lenses that I have, if I go really further away, so I get a really full body portrait, very often you see more of the background and you don't have that in intimate feeling. Uh, I, Whenever I go with a lens, I never look for the technical aspects like sharpness, which is great, but I, that's not something that I go for. I go with character. And sometimes a soft lens gives you a certain character, which a sharp lens may not be able to give you. In this case, I think this lens gives you very sharp images, but also keeps a certain character with the blurry background. I think it looks really, really beautiful. And you may think, well, why not get a 70 to 200? Uh, then you are more versatile. Well, I actually, I'm not a big fan of 70 to 200s. I had one the F4 version, it was really, really bad in, in daylight. <laughs> I remember having shot the 70 to 200 F4 and I had to go to ISO 3200 in a park like this at one o'clock in November, during the day, at one o'clock, but in November. And so it was really not practical. Uh, I can totally understand 70 to 200 is a really great package. It gives you a many focal length in one lens, so you don't have to sw switch lenses, which is phenomenal, but it's very heavy. I don't really care so much about the price tag because I take many images, so any price tag is actually okay because I use it every day if it's good. So the price is not a, is, I, w I wouldn't see it as a negative. Uh, but the the 70 to 200, it's, it's very heavy, it's very long, it's very big in general. And it wouldn't, for example, it wouldn't work on a tripod like this. This is a tripod that fits into my camera bag and the 70 to 200 would be too big. And this is something personal. I love losing, uh, I love using prime lenses. Um, usually the open aperture is, is much better 
sharpness is much better, autofocus often works better, uh, especially on older camera bodies, it's easier to, to, to set it up. Um, but also I like the, the simplicity of just having one focal length on a, on a lens. Uh, the more options I have, the more difficult it gets and the more the more choices I have to make. Do I now go with 70 or do I now go with, shoot at 100 or do I go to 200 or do I go to 150 millimeter? This is all happening in my mind when I shoot with a zoom lens. I have too many options and I love not having options. I take the options away to have much more beautiful emotion while taking pictures. So it's a choice to be minimalistic in a certain way. On this day right here, I just had the 200 millimeter lens and I had to take all images at 200 millimeters. Of course, I just got the lens, it's new, so I'm excited to use it. But it's my approach uh, all the time that I try to minimalize, uh, to, to, to go with a minimalistic approach to photography because the more stuff I carry with me, uh, the more I am not in the moment. Sometimes I go out on these self-portrait shootings and I, I have another outfit with me, another shirt or a hat or sunglasses. And in this case, I just had the same stuff on. I just changed the jacket. So I had this jacket, I had this jacket, but all, all the rest is the shoes are the same, the jersey is the, the same, the pants are the same. I just had a variety of jackets and it's easy for me to switch jackets. Um, because I parked next to it and then could change the jacket easily. Sometimes I bring more stuff that is dif more difficult to change, like changing your pants. Um, so in this case, it was really nice workflow. And this goes not just for clothes, but also for lenses. I like to have no a very limited amount of choices. And I mean, if you have a great lens where the autofocus works and you get a nice blurry background and the sharpness is great, you don't need many more lenses. Uh, I may have brought another 50 millimeter or 24 millimeter or 35 and that would be actually it for an outdoor portrait session, for example. Okay, I hope I can give you uh, an insight into what you can do with the 200 millimeter 2.8 lens. I paid 475 euros for it. I can sell that for the same price uh, because I see it even more expensive on eBay. Um, so I can use it now for three, four, five, six months, even for a year. And if I don't use it, I can sell it for the same price and have had a great time with it. I hope you enjoy these videos. I always try to get a, a real world approach. So it doesn't make sense for me to film the lens so much, which is what I see in many other reviews where they just show you images of the lens but not many images taken with the lens, especially not in, in, in real photo shoots. Now, this is not a photo shoot where I photograph someone else. I photograph myself, but you, you, you get the point. How do images look like where you just have the face? How do images look like full body portraits? How do images look like half body portraits? And I want to give you this uh, with this video. I hope you had a great time. I think we're now at the end of it, kind of. Uh, I will use this lens much more, probably make another series of videos with it. But for now, just picked it up, but already went deep into it and can tell you right now it's a phenomenal lens. You need a little bit of distance, but it's actually not that much that you need. This is not a lens that I would use indoors that much, um, unless you do it with a maybe sports event or so where you have distance between you. This is a lens where I see that shines with photographing people get your kid with a dog and give them a ball to play. Then the dog runs for the ball and the kid also runs for the ball and you just stand there with face detection on and the face of the dog or the face of the kid will be in focus and you will get beautiful shots easily without them noticing you're taking pictures of them. Where all the other focal length would be just too far away to capture. So, yeah, I know something is here. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, I hope you had a great time and take a look at my channel. You've, you will find many videos to kind of all cameras and lenses. Um, and I always try to give you real images with a real world perspective. And this was the 200 millimeter F2.8 EF. 
full frame lens. Thank you very much.